Erythema infectiosum is the topic, and erythema infectiosum is also sometimes referred to as fifth disease. Fifth disease because it's the fifth of the five uh, common pediatric rashes. And it's essentially an infection with a virus known as parvovirus, and in particular parvovirus B19. And it causes, of course, a rash, most commonly on the cheek, and in such a way that it's given a very characteristic and easy to remember phrase, slapped cheek rash, because it looks like the child's been slapped on the cheek. And normally, it is, of course, a pediatric uh, rash. You're looking at an age group of about four to seven years of age. In terms of the pathophysiology of this rash, it spread really uh, through respiratory droplets. So it definitely is contagious. But what's interesting about this is that it's only contagious before the rash actually appears, before the onset of the rash. So before the rash appears, there's like this flu-like uh, prodrome phrase, and during that phase it's uh, contagious. Now, unfortunately, even though it seems like a very simple rash, it, it can spread during pregnancy from mother to fetus. And when that happens, the consequences can be pretty severe. One thing that can happen is the baby, the fetus, can develop severe anemia. Most extreme cases, the baby can be born um, stillbirth, meaning it can be fatal. Now, the most serious consequence of this uh, parvovirus infection is that it decreases erythropoiesis, meaning the development of uh, proper uh, blood cells. Now, normally it's mild in, in the average child, but it can be severe in children who have sickle cell. So that is a very specific uh, thing you need to remember. So let's talk about the symptoms. Initially, you have this sort of flu-like phase of uh, fever, malaise, uh, you know, muscle aches, those kinds of symptoms. And interestingly, it's this phase that the child is infectious. Now, several days later, the child will develop the rash, and that's when the child is no longer infectious, so not infectious anymore during this phase. Now, the rash is, um, as I mentioned before, it's, an, it's a slap cheek rash, it's erythematous, and in addition to the cheek, it can also appear on other parts of the body, such as the extremities and also the buttocks as well. In terms of diagnosis, really, it's just a clinical diagnosis, just looking at the rash. But if the child has a known blood disorder, such as sickle cell, then you need to do a few more tests. You need to do a CBC, and you need to do a reticulocyte count. And that is because you have to assess what um, type of suppression has occurred. So the hematopoietic suppression that can occur because of this virus, in particular in, in children with sickle cell, these two tests should be done. And in terms of treatment, for mild cases, just supportive care really. You know, for example, if the child has a fever, you give them acetaminophen, things like that. But in severe cases, you need to give something that will help increase the erythropoiesis. And what is that? IV immune globulin. This is reserved, of course, for severe cases. Now let's take a look at a few vignettes, see what this looks like in a patient. Four-year-old, otherwise healthy boys, brought to the family physician's office with an eight-day history of nonspecific malaise, low-grade fever, as he begins to feel better now, manifests a red maculopapular rash on the cheeks that on the day he is brought in appears to be coalescing to produce a diffuse red color. 
now involving the chin and area behind the ears, as well as the trunk and buttocks, sparing the circumural zone. There is no palpable lymphadenopathy, and the oral exam is not remarkable. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Well, they've given you classic scenario for erythema infectiosum. The next question, six-year-old girl is brought to the clinic because of a 24-hour history of itchy red rash. Over the past seven days, she has not been feeling well. She had a fever, headache, muscle aches. Mother treated her with acetaminophen, and these symptoms resolved. Now she has this rash that appeared overnight as the other symptoms resolved. Her temperature now is 96. Physical exam shows erythematous facial rash on the cheeks and a symmetric macular papular lace-like rash on the arms, buttocks, and thighs. Remainder of the exam is unremarkable. Lab studies show leukocyte count 36, platelet 350. At this time, the most correct statement about her condition is, well, is she infectious or not? That's what this question is getting at. And the answer is no, because the rash has appeared. When she was in that prodrome phase, that flu-like phase, initially she was infectious, but not anymore. So the answer choice that is correct for this question is D. She should return to school after this office visit. She's no longer infectious. So she will have no problem going back to school. She doesn't have to worry about infecting other children. And finally, you care for a 32-year-old school teacher who is in the second half of her pregnancy. A six-year-old boy came to class on the first day of school with an infectious uh, slap cheeks and a lace-like rash. His mother told your patient that the boy became sick with a high fever, muscle aches, and headache 10 days before school started. When these symptoms subsided, this rash suddenly appeared one day ago. A doctor examined the boy and told the mother that all of his blood work was normal. Since the boy did not want to miss the first day of class and he felt fine, mother allowed him to attend school. Even though your patient is asymptomatic, she is worried about her health and the health of her unborn baby. Best next step is... Well, again, the, the six-year-old boy who came to school has developed a rash, so he's no longer infectious. So this 32-year-old woman who is pregnant does not need to worry. And the answer choice that is correct, therefore, is E. Reassure her, the pregnant woman, of the relatively low potential risk to her and her unborn baby. She doesn't need to go through any of these uh, amniocentesis and staying home and getting immunoglobulin. So choice E is the correct one for this question.